Topic 6.2 is all about the circulatory system. This system is designed to move nutrients, like oxygen, around the body and accomplishes this task through a muscular pump called the heart and numerous pathways that lead to every part of the body through arteries and veins. Before we dive into the details, let's take a look back in time before we knew how the system worked. Before our modern understanding, People in the 17th century thought that blood was created in the liver and moved around the body through arteries, where it then disappeared once it was used. This was okay, they thought, because new blood was being continuously created in the liver. They thought that the veins were used to cool the body and were not connected to arteries at all. Most people accepted this idea until a scientist named William Harvey developed a new hypothesis based on experiments and observations. Harvey said that arteries and veins were part of a single network, with the heart acting as the pump. This network had two circulation loops, one that moved blood from the heart to the body and back, and the other that moved blood from the heart to the lungs and back. Today, we know this double circulation model is correct. Systemic circulation moves blood to the body and back, and pulmonary circulation moves blood to the lungs and back. Let's take a deep look at the structures found in the heart to connect the dots. Let's start by orienting ourselves with the structures of the heart. First, it is important to note that when looking at a heart on paper, you need to orient yourself to a flipped perspective. Because if this person were standing in front of you, their right and left side would be mirrored to your own perspective. This means that the left side of the paper would show the right side of that person's heart, and the right side of the paper would show the left side of that person's heart. This is important when labeling structures and understanding blood flow. Now, let's label the important structures, starting with the four chambers of the heart. The upper chambers of the heart are called atria, or singular atrium. Here we have the right atrium, and on the opposite side is the left atrium. Below the atria are two lower chambers called ventricles. This is the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. The two sides of the heart are separated by thick tissue called the septum. The atria and ventricles are separated by valves called atrioventricular valves. These are easy valves to remember because the words atria and ventricle are used in naming the valve which separates the chambers. Additionally, there are two more valves called semilunar valves. These two valves are located here. If you want to be more specific, this valve is called the pulmonary valve and the other is called the aortic valve. Either way, they are both semilunar valves. Other important structures include the arteries and veins that are directly attached to the heart. For arteries, we have the aorta, located here, and the pulmonary artery, located here. For veins, we have the vena cava, here, and the pulmonary veins, here. Now that we have the structures, let's draw some arrows that show the circulation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood through the heart. I recommend using two different colors for this when you draw it. Let's start with the end of systemic circulation, where deoxygenated blood is returning to the heart from the body. This deoxygenated blood is sent into the right atrium through the superior and inferior vena cava. From here, it gets pumped to the right ventricle through the atrioventricular, or AV, valve. When the right ventricle contracts, it sends the blood through the semilunar pulmonary valve to the pulmonary artery. This blood is then taken to the lungs where it picks up oxygen, which I will note here as a color change. The oxygenated blood then returns to the left atrium through the pulmonary veins. This notes the end of pulmonary circulation. Once in the left atrium, the blood gets pumped into the left ventricle across the AV valve on the left side of the heart. When the left ventricle contracts, the blood exits the semilunar aortic valve to the aorta where it is pushed to all parts of the body. When it reaches its desired location, the oxygen is dropped off and the blood becomes deoxygenated. It then returns through the vena cava to the right atrium and the entire process starts over again. That ends the systemic circulation cycle. One other important note, you will see that the left ventricle is much thicker and stronger than the right ventricle. This is because the left ventricle has to generate enough pressure to move blood throughout the entire body, where the right ventricle only has to generate enough pressure to push blood to the lungs. As the heart is beating, there are different changes in pressure within each chamber. 
This graph shows the pressure changes in the atrium, ventricles, and the aorta during the different parts of the cardiac cycle. Notice that the atrial pressure is consistently lower than the pressure in the ventricles and the aorta. But why is this? Because the atria only need to push blood to the ventricles, which are located directly below their position. Completing this task does not require much pressure. On the other hand, you should notice that the ventricular and aortic pressure are very high, especially at the same time. During this part of the graph is when the ventricles are contracting. The ventricles need to push blood at high pressure because they have to move the blood either throughout the entire body or to the lungs. If there was low pressure generated by these chambers, the blood would not move very far, which would be detrimental to our survival. The highest pressure comes from the left ventricle moving blood through the aorta as that oxygenated blood travels to all parts of the body. There are three main structures that blood moves through in the circulatory system. These are arteries, veins, and capillaries. There are a few things to remember about these structures. Arteries only move blood away from the heart. Arteries have thick, elastic membranes and a narrow, interior space called the lumen. This keeps the blood moving at high pressure. Veins only move blood towards the heart. Veins have thin walls and a large lumen. Veins also contain valves that prevent blood from flowing backwards on its way back to the heart. This is essential because the pressure in veins is very low. Capillaries are structures that connect arteries and veins and allow materials, like oxygen, to be exchanged with surrounding cells and tissues. Capillaries are one cell thick and are so small that only one red blood cell can move through them at a time. This is needed for gas exchange. Here is a video of blood cells moving through the capillaries in the tail of a goldfish. Here is another comparison of arteries, veins, and capillaries. This capillary image is not drawn to scale and should be much, much smaller. Take a minute and write down observations about these structures on your paper. Atherosclerosis is a disease that affects arteries in the cardiovascular system. Atherosclerosis is characterized by plaque buildup from fatty deposits in arteries. This can cause serious problems, and if the artery becomes completely blocked, it can lead to a heart attack or stroke depending on its location in the body. Diet, exercise, and many other factors are associated with this disease, which is one of the leading killers in the United States. The heartbeat is controlled by structures called the sinoatrial node and atrioventricular node. The SA node receives electrical signals from the brain that begins the contractions of both atria. Shortly after, the signal moves along to the AV node, which initiates the contractions of both ventricles. This two-part, delayed contraction gives the heart its signature lub-dub sound as valves are closing. Heart rate can be changed by two structures within the body. The medulla in the brain controls the heartbeat by sending electrical signals to the SA node. This can either increase or decrease heart rate depending on what the body needs. Another method of altering heart rate can be done through chemical messages called hormones. The adrenal glands, located on top of the kidneys, can secrete epinephrine, which is a chemical signal used to increase heart rate. This usually happens as a response when you are put into a fight or flight situation, like being attacked by a bear, and your body needs to perform to stay alive. 